At this stage, I would love to hand you over to Hayley Richardson and Darren Van Der Wint of The Beautiful Collective. Hey, gang. Hello. Hello. How are you going? <laughs> Thanks for uh, letting us dress up and get out of our tracksuit and compression tights uh, <laughs> for the last four months. So, cheers on that. Um, yeah, so we're really excited, guys, to present to you today and just really open up and have a conversation. Um, you know, we're, we're really passionate about selling printed products in our business and so we just want to uh, share what we know with you guys. Um, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of experience between us. I think we've worked out it's, it's about 40 years, but we said 20 because we felt a little <laughs> Didn't feel old. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, during that time, we've sold probably over 500 albums, you know, thousands of wall art um, and thousands of printed um, images, matted images. So, um, you know, we've, we've tried all the different business models and, and sort of ways of, of selling and working our business around product. Um, and what we've perfected and what we're going to focus on with you today is personable sales um, and that's using what we call the pre-designed um, method to our couples um, and that's what's given us I think the opportunity to have a sustainable uh, photography business over many years so yeah um, and you know I think we've already touched on it um, this crazy time of that we're in has really given us maybe a little pause and a chance to you know, reset and rethink our businesses um, and we've been forced to do that because our I know she's new to this. Here we go. We're back. Sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> we were muted. I was, I was unmuting. I was muting everybody and unmuted you. So we're all good again. Sorry. Did we miss out on anything just there or um, we went up to where Hayley just finished speaking? Oh, could you repeat the last sentence for me? Yeah, no, I was just sort of saying that, you know, being thrown into this corona space and situation that, you know, it's actually quite exciting because it's given all of us the opportunity, I think, to really work out what is important to us, not only in our personal lives, but in our business and where we want to start focusing our efforts and energy so that when we come out of this uh, ISO, we can, you know, really... We've got a game it. plan and, yeah. you know, got a, a method to, to work with. So, you know, it's exciting. So as busy as we all kind of feel and as stressed, I know a lot of you are probably doing homeschooling and, you know, lots of other things that you wouldn't normally have to, to do every day. But... Um, you know, be positive. Think of this as a really exciting time for your business. All right, Dazza, so why do we offer, I'm going to ask you, why, why have you why, throughout all why, your career, you know, offered... My, my 25 years in the wedding industry. Offered albums, why? Look, I think um, for me, on an emotional level, it's all about having a legacy. I think the thing with a tangible product and having something that's printed... I know that one day my photos are going to be in the hands of Nonna Connie. And of course, you know, my Nonna Connie is the bride I photographed two weeks ago, or perhaps the bride I photographed maybe, you know, a year ago or maybe two years ago. But one day they're going to be Nonna Connie in 50 or 60 years. So I think it's important to have something that's, you know, I'm not going to be around forever. And it's nice to have a legacy that's going to, well, just stand the test of time. Um, on a business level, well, you know, having a, pro a, a tangible product has given me a career that's been sustainable and something where I've been, you know, just able to uh, scale my business in such a way that it's always giving me the, um, the rewards that, that come with, uh, you know, selling and guys, just so you know who Nonna Connie is, we haven't invented her. She actually. I love Nonna Connie. <laughs> Nonna Connie was a dear Nonna that we met um, a couple of years ago at one of our beautiful brides' we, homes. We thought she was the grandmother of the granddaughter that we photographed. And she was just, you know, she didn't speak English. Um, she was. We were just so taken with her. 
and she she had all these beautiful images um, on her walls. She lost her. Can I interrupt Hales to say that you she you guys bonded so much at the wedding over your love of photography. She invited you back for homemade limoncello at Christmas, right? She did. She, did. she tried to get us Molly the monk a little bit, but um, she, she almost succeeded. Mm. But we're, we were just so taken that, you know, sadly she didn't have a wedding album as such, but what she had was this beautiful image that you can see in the photos there. You know, it's torn and it's ripped and... It's been handled and, you know, it was printed on this gorgeous, you know, fibre-based paper, but it's still around and Nonna, you know, grips onto this thing and she, she has it as the one day that she remembers. Um, and, and Hales, she also took you for a, a, a wander, like a walking tour of her house and showed you all the photographs, right? She did. She did. So we got the grand tour and, yeah, she's she's... She's a dear, lovely thing. I think she's 96 or something now. So mm. we hope she continues strong and, um, yeah. But that's Nonna Connie. So the point is that, you know, Nonna Connie was one day one of a young, a young bride, the brides that we photograph every day. So we, you know, as Daz was saying. Um, well, it's the only tangible thing that she has left. And yeah. it stands the, the test of time because, you know, that photograph is probably 60 years old. So I think what it says is that prints will last 60 or 70 years into the future because we've already seen it happen in the past. And with technology, um, that may not well be the case. So it's, it's the tangible is the, the most future-proof product that we can, that we can offer. So. All right. So moving on. So... From the get-go, you know, our approach to selling has always been around education and transparency with our couples. So, you know, explaining every step of the way to them, um, how we work, what we believe in and what they can expect on the journey with us. So this starts right from the moment they come into contact with our brand to the final delivery of that beautiful album. So the secret sauce for us is not being afraid, you know, to provide our couples with the level of service they deserve because, let's face it, this is one of the most, you know, important days of their life. Um, so, you know, before we dive into the stages of um, the client education, we'll, we'll give you an overview of how we do it and what we call this pre-design method. Um, but, you know, there is no salesy pushiness with the way we do things. It's um, about educating your client to have expectations. That's what the basic, the, the bottom line actually is. And so we'll go through uh, how we educate our clients soon. But um, I think the next stage is we're going to give you an overview of what actually uh, pre-designing is all about. So how does, tell us about it, Des, how, how does that? So, so the, the premise of the pre-design method is that the first number of sides are included in that, an album as a starting point. The idea being is that before the wedding, we have absolutely no idea what the couple wants. We don't really know how the day is going to pan out. And we have absolutely no idea of what photographs we're going to take. So what that means is by including the first number of sides, we can have... Um, there's, there's no constraints and the couple can have as many sides or as many photographs as they feel comfortable with. And so we facilitate this by using the pre-design method. Um, it's, it's basically a platform to work from as opposed to handing the couple all the digital files and asking them to choose their favourites. We actually take that as part of our service and deliver a pre-design where we choose all the photographs and we tell the story of you know, we include all the characters, you know, the, the setting up shots, the, the, and, and the story as it unfolds. Yeah, so one of the benefits of doing it this way is that, as Daz said, there's no ceiling on the amount that the couple may want to purchase. Um, and, you know, the reason we do this rather than them letting them choose the images is that Firstly, it's part of what we feel is our job. You know, they've um, trusted us to shoot their day. They've come to us. They've chosen us. So, you know, ultimately, 
that the trust is already there, but we shot their day, you know, we know it intimately, we know all the key players, um, we know which images best tell their story and best flow, um, and we're far be better educated to curate that story, mm. um, you know, than probably, I don't know, I think probably 95 no, or, or maybe more 99% percent of our couples, you know, they'll often choose images that are safe, they won't understand how to choose images that coherently tell a beautiful design from spread to spread. Um, and the other real bonus for us is that we're in the hot seat. We're controlling this transaction. You know, we're not waiting months for them to choose the images and get back to us. Um, so there's no workflow halting for us. There's no you know, hounding them for their choices, emailing them going, guys, you know, you haven't got back to us. There's none of that. And so what it means is that within 10 weeks of their wedding, we've often delivered everything done and dusted. They've got their book, they've got everything. Um, and yeah, we will be going through this whole process with you in the next webinar. So don't worry if you still not can't get your head around how this all works. We will be showing you how to design, how we design in Fundy, and how we actually facilitate that sale um, over Zoom. So yeah, so basically by providing a platform, we're doing the majority of work for the client. So our couples are always over the moon um, that they can tinker and go through the design process with us. And you know, that allows them to take ownership of the album. And it means that they can have the album that they truly want because um, they've been given a platform to work from. They've been able to tinker on it. They've taken ownership of it. And the process has allowed them to have exactly what they want. Yeah, so you know, as opposed to saying, guys, you know, here's the link to your gallery, here's 1,200 photos, um, knock yourselves out and, you know. We'll see you in about three months yeah. and three months never comes because, you know, life takes over and things like that. And, you know, they're viewing it on their shitty little iPad or their cracked iPhone screen or, you know, their, their seven-year-old computer or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah. It's not the most beautiful way to experience their, their wedding. No, that's right. So, and, you know, so by, by providing the first 24 sides as we do in our albums and that being a starting point, obviously we charge for any extra sides. Now, the idea behind that is, you know, why do we charge for the extra sides? Well, it's because we're providing a service. We're also providing our experience, our time sitting with the couple, our design skills. And, you know, it's that personal uh, situation that we're providing. And because of that, that's why we need to be remunerated for. Yeah. And, you know, you think of it like this. We always say... You know, it's like buying a, co a coffee. You know, you've got no qualms in spending your $4 or $4.50 to go and grab a latte down at your local, you know, with the barista that knows your name and that, you know, carefully crafts that beautiful coffee perfectly the way you like it and has a little exchange and a chat. And, you know, you know you could go and buy a kilo of coffee for, you know, 28 bucks and, and you know, get maybe 70 or 80 coffees out of it and they might cost you 40 cents. But you're quite happy to pay the $4 knowing it's the experience and the whole um, feeling that you get from that morning morning cuppa. So this is no different, you know? But it's actually a good analogy between um, shoot and burn and uh, shooting with an album or shooting with product because the analogy of a, of a kilo of coffee, which a, a coffee shop sells for maybe 25 bucks, I think it generally holds about 100 shots. But if you were to go to a coffee shop and buy 100 shots worth of coffee, you'd be paying $400. So you can see almost there's 10 times more value for the owner to be able to sell a product because of the ambience of his coffee shop, his experience, his cool looking tattoos, the, the, the ability to maybe sell a croissant or, or a muffin on top of that. So you have these two different business models that um, one is about sh uh, delivering one bag of coffee or selling 400 of those shots 
at a lot more expensive sort of price and gaining more profit. So, you know, guys, it's really the opportunity factor. You know, at the end of the day, every couple is going to spend different amounts. So we don't really want you to get hung up on, you know, how much each couple's going to, you know, spend with you. I think if you focus on doing your job, um, you know, being genuinely passionate to offer these products to your client and, you know, making sure that your business, you know, checkpoints are down pat and you're giving the best customer experience and you're listening to their needs and you're hearing what they want and you're working with them, um, it's an awesome outcome because everyone's empowered. It's a win-win. There's actually no selling in that. There's no sales. There's no putting people over barrels. You're just doing your job. And if you've done that correctly, the averages will come. All right. Has anyone got any questions up until this point? Uh, yes, apologies. Um, there's a few people who, who are trying to log in and I'm figuring out how to do that. But yes, um, Simon Whitaker, uh, and maybe you guys want to cover this a little bit later on, but he was mentioning that um, couples sometimes feel overwhelmed by having to choose the images. Now, I think you're going to cover that later, right? They yeah. definitely do. And that's, again, the reason why we do Don't it let them. for them. Because, as I said, to hand a couple 1,200 shots and give them that task, they're not... Um, educated to do that. This is not something they sit and do every day. This is what we should be doing for them. I, I actually like analogies and it's a bit like buying a car. When you buy a car, you go to the car yard and you look at the whole car and then you might accessorise it with a bit of, uh, you know, like window tinting or mag wheels or something like that. But initially you buy the whole car. The shoot and burn method or, or giving the client the opportunity to choose the photographs is a bit like going to the car yard and the guy saying, okay, well, which crankshaft do you want and which engine do you want and what wheels and what nut and what windscreen wiper and tell me which one of these you want, tell me which one of those you want. It's, it's just, too difficult. Yeah. You'd never be able to buy a car that way. So you'd probably have a car that looks like you and know, wouldn't work and probably wouldn't drive on the road because yeah. you, you know we're not people who can make we're not mechanics we can't put a car together but you know if we were to see the car in the yard we know exactly what we're getting so again it's just part of we feel part of the service that we should be doing yeah you got to remember you're with the client every step of the way on the whole wedding you're the only person who's with them for the whole day. So you're intimately knowledgeable of what's going on. You know exactly what glance has meant something to them. You know exactly what looks meant something to them. You know all these, the, the people who are most important. You know everything about that wedding. So you're the person who's most professionally obligated to be able to put that story together. Plus it takes the pressure off them. You know, they, they just feel so overwhelmed with being handed all these files. They don't even know where to start. Like, they don't know how a page flows. They don't know what, what you know, a spread means, that it cohesively joins to the next and this aesthetic feeling of a story. We're talking a different language than they understand. You know, they just know what they like and what they don't like. So I think that was a very long-winded answer <laughs> to your question, but yeah, any others? Um, just to clarify, when you're saying 25 sides or let's say 30 sides, 60 sides, 100 sides, that is 50 spreads, 100 sides. Okay, so, yeah. so the, way, the way that we do it is this is one side, that's another side, that's a whole spread. So from the middle gusset, one side, another side, a spread. So we, we charge per sides or we talk per sides. So one side, another side. And and just so you guys are aware too, when we, in our price list, we refer to both sides and spreads. So 15, 15 sides, sorry. So what we've got here on is 30 pages or 30 sides. Well, yeah, but we never mention pages. It's either sides or spreads. Yeah. And we're clear on that. We make sure they understand that from the onset, you know, when they come in. So, all 
All right. Um, Will we move on? Yes. Yes. Um, please do. <laughs> right. So basically, at this time, it's if you're deciding that you know albums are something that you would like to do, you've actually got to create a product line to sell. So we suggest that you get at least three albums with varying number of sides. So 30, 60, and 100. The idea about 30 is to demonstrate, you know, a small amount of sides. 60 is sort of like a middle range and what an average sort of wedding might go to. And then 100 sides where, you know, when money's no object and they just love all the photos and they've got an opportunity to hit that 100 sides. Yeah, so... You know, for us, it's really important that we show, you know, different covers, beautiful mm. embossing, um, and we show what we love. So, yeah. so you know, that's that's the vertical eight by ten or rectangular eight by ten. That's yeah. that guy. We love this distressed hide with the blind emboss. Um, so you know, we have different options options that we feel suit our, you know, clientele and our style. Um, but I know Memento offers such a generous uh, offering for samples. So Libby, can you tell us, like, and I know you've got extra things you're offering at the moment, but if guys don't have samples, um, tell us how they go about it and what they kind of get off and things like that. It's, it's very easy. We offer five discounts a year for studio display samples, and that's a 40% discount. And... I encourage people to make use of that every year to freshen up your selection and to use it on a range of products, different sizes, different materials. I always think that um, people can imagine things that are smaller and less impressive um, rather than, you know, project to what the biggest, best looking um, album would look like. So make sure you, you show them the, the ultimate option um, because people often want what they see as well. Uh, and yes, yeah, so that's five studio displays at 40% off a year. And to um, redeem that off, you, you actually have to call and speak to our service team and they'll process that for you. And the only difference between a studio display album that we produce for you and a real album is that it has a, it has a, um, a small blind emboss with the word studio display on the last page. So it, it's not terribly different. Uh, now, just to be clear, we also do have a, an, an added 10% um, discount on your trade discount at the moment, but that doesn't apply to studio displays. That's right. But hey, guys, there are a few questions that have popped up, if you don't mind me um, sure. just throwing them at you. No uh, so Ruth Gilmore has said that she's tried pre-designing and letting clients choose their images. Um, she offers two free design reviews and she uses Funda. Fundy, uh, I've always found that pre-designing albums for my clients has been more time consuming than having them choose their own images because they want to swap the images in and out. Um, so what, do you have any suggestions on how to keep this like really time effective? Look, Ruth, it, there, there's no doubt there's work to be done here. This is not, you know, sitting on your ass and getting paid to do nothing. Like, it does take time. We do spend, you know, a couple of hours designing that album for them in that process. We then present the album to them and we spend about three hours with them during that design session. And that's where we allow changes and back and, you know, them to swap out and we work with them. But what it means is we're not waiting three weeks for that process to happen and a miscommunication in language or then another two weeks to pass while we've swapped the grandma photo with the auntie photo. But then she goes, oh, no, no, I didn't mean that one. I meant something else. So it's all this slow back and forth. When you work out those five or ten design changes uh, and you add up the time of logging back into that job, logging out the disruption, you've probably spent two or three hours on it. Yeah. And are you going to end up with the most beautiful looking album? Probably not. Um, but to address that issue, that's why we sit with them, whether it's over Zoom or in person, and we will go through that process with them. So they have that time to get it done and it's finished, like it's nailed. 
So what you're saying here, it's not about you designing it, then sending it off and they get to sit no. with it. You actually control the time frame. And so we pre-design and then make a, a meeting appointment for them to come in and do the and go through the design with us. Yeah, so you've locked it into the schedule. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get to this, so we're a little bit ahead, but we'll, we'll definitely explain a lot more how this, this process works. And, and just so you guys are aware, there are people, and I, I feel you'll cover this later on too, you know, do you show a limited number of pages or the whole thing? Yeah. We're going to talk about yes. this. Yes. yes. All right. We're just kind of giving you the prelim, right? Telling you what you've got to get in order, get your house sorted, you know, re revamp your collateral for your business and all that at this point. So it starts with the samples. Um, and then, of course, as part of this getting the house ready and house in order, you know, you need to overhaul your business model. So... Um, you've got to get your shit sorted. Yeah, you've got to get your shit sorted. <laughs> So that, you know, that message is really clear to your couples that, you know, the final destination of the images is a printed album, not digital files. That's, that's really the crux of, you know, sending your message home here. So um, how do we do that, Dan? How, how do we send you know, this message home? Obviously, website, you create a page um, highlighting the albums, you know, do a product shoot. Um, what Memento are doing with their sort of content is fantastic. But, you know, my albums take photos of them, show off all the features, everything like that. Maybe do a video clip of, you know, going through an album. You know, there's a thousand things that you can, you know, way of presenting an album online. You know, socials, you can do behind the scenes type things or, you know, maybe packaging an album and sending it off to a client. Maybe a client opening the album for the first time, things like that. You know, really showing your passion. So when you, you know, do an Insta story, it's you really talking to that beautiful paper, um, showing the tangibility of it. Um, and I think what does this touching on, I uh, believe Memento has now got a sort of online tour gallery that photographers can access. Is yes, that's right. right. Can you... That's right. So there's uh, images of the production process, there's images of the albums and the details. Um, there's actually a video, a time-lapse video of the production of an album. Awesome. Um, so people can see how much work goes into it. And we also have, just for people who are really new and still setting them up, I have had requests over the years um, for just some uh, stylized shots of albums that we've turned into PSD files so that people can drop their own image on the page just yeah. if they need to get up and start. There, right? So that's fantastic. Yeah. But you, know, you can easily shoot your sample albums and, and have content there, you know. But um, if you haven't got your samples, you're getting it done, then yeah. I think Libby's got that covered. Which yeah. Is yeah, I think it's always better for people to have their own, but it's a starting yeah. point. And if you yeah. guys want any inspiration, um, I often reshare or, yeah, repost on our Memento Insta feed images that other like our wedding photographers have shot and um, published on their feeds so if you just want you know some inspiration check it out that's a starting point guys so if you haven't got your collateral together um i think it's awesome that memento have got you some stock images that you can you know get going on um you know so what are the other touch points well you know you can have your albums on trade shows or maybe with other venues and you know sort of networking with other vendors and just basically getting albums out to the public, you know, letting them be able to touch them maybe at a trade show or when you have an inclined meeting, bring them with you. You know, at the end of the day, you just got to shout it from the rooftops that you're a photographer that believes in delivering an album and that the, the best way to tell the wedding story is in a beautiful book and not just in digital files. You've got to shout it out. Album, album, album. That's what print, you're going print, 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 print. All right. So, okay. So we've told you sort of a bit about, you know, getting your house in order, getting your samples sorted. We've mentioned what the pre-design method is. So now let's go through the stages right from the beginning. Um, so this is the client meeting. They've called us up. They're coming in. They're having a chat. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, on Zoom or if you're face-to-face, -face, obviously, during corona, we can't be. Um, but, you know, post and pre, we would, we would always meet with our clients. 
And you don't have to have a glossy studio. As Daz said, you can be meeting in a cafe. In a cafe. Share workspace. Libby, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> Is there your mouth doing this that we can't hear anything? <laughs> Did you, did, sorry, I was just uh, following the chat feed. Were you asking me a question then? No, no, no. no. So we're just saying, you know, um, you, you don't need the glitzy studio or um, stuff to, to be able to sell albums. So, you know, what, what do we do in this meeting? So obviously this is the first time that we get the chance to actually get the album into the couple's hand. You know, we get them to touch it. We explain the beautiful you know, stop, we talk to the beautiful spreads, we, you know, tell them like, oh, look at the beautiful paper and... You Basically know. explain all the features and benefits. So one of the real great features of a Memento album is that they can print over the gusset. So what that means is that a photo can go over the two sides or become a continuous spread. And that's a really great feature because not only does it mean you can have a much larger photograph, it means the flow of the design is not inhibited to just a left and a right. It can actually flow through the centre. And when you've got that perler image that everyone loves and needs to be, you know, uh, special, then that one there is what can work. And it lays flat, as Libby's doing. <laughs> so basically, we just explain flat. all the features and benefits of the album and we get the client, obviously, to touch it. But we also ask the question, how does the paper feel for you? And they always go, oh, wow, the paper's amazing. We love the touch. Because touch is such an important factor for the album and another added sort of benefit that they actually get to touch the photographs and the emotion that comes through from those photographs. You know, we, we, we genuinely get excited. You know, we love the fact that we say that our, our albums are printed locally and we love the fact that we can support a local business and that, you know, we genuinely know each and every set of hands that have gone into this beautiful production, you know, right from press, right from to Marty, you know, binding and handling these books. These are craftspeople. This is not banged out online you know, in some Chinese factory that we don't know about. We know every stage and every level of care and love that goes into that. And that's something and it's a great we feature. love to share. And a people, lot of clients really love the fact that it's it's produced locally. Yeah. They really they love that. Their eyes light up when, when we mention that it's, you know, produced here in Sydney, yeah. they love that. So. so, you know, right from the onset, we're enthusiastic, we're passionate, and we're not bullshitting. Like, this is not selling. We're actually genuinely showing our excitement and love for the product because we love them. Like, we love this leather, we love these embossings, we love this paper. So We're enthusiastic. We're just doing our job. We're just, we're just explaining the features to them at this point. Um, we then, you know, all this stems to the next real big thing that we tell them is that, you know, guys, this beautiful album that you will hold, that will, you know, have your images in them, this is the thing that's going to stand the test of time because it's future-proof. You don't need to have the latest technology, you know, to be able to enjoy um, Looking this, through your photos. This album, you know, it's not reliant on you having the latest iMac. Um, I mean, a few of you would know, you know, we used to give our images on DVDs and back in the day, you know, floppy disks or whatever. I mean, none of our computers even have the DVD slot anymore, you know, um, let alone USBs that the sectors die and you lose them. Um, so basically the client meeting is the first opportunity that you get to show the albums in person, you know, hopefully, and that it's the first time that they can see that maybe an album is something that I might want. Yeah. Because they can actually start to see the value in having their photographs put into an album rather than uh, just maybe receiving them on a USB stick. Yeah. So, you know, it's something that's also really fascinating, I find this really fascinating, it's the geek in me, is that um, it's actually scientifically proven that our brain lights up and responds 30% more to a tangible image. We have a 30% more connection to that image 
when we touch it rather than seeing it backlit on a screen. Um, and I've got a really interesting little article which um, we'll, we've put in the notes at the end. But um, It's basically it's paper versus digital. Yeah, it's yeah. Quite, quite fascinating. Guys, can I uh, interject just for a moment? Because we do have um, a few questions. But first of all, I would like to ask everybody to, um, when they are making a comment in the chat uh, panel, there is the option to um, make your comment visible to all panelists and all panelists and attendees. It's down on the bottom right. It'd be great if people could make their setting all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see everyone's comments at the same time. Uh, and now there's, yes, there's a comment here from one of our um, participants who's saying it feels always, it feels a bit salesy to um, show off the album feature or, you know, to present the albums in the initial inquiry or meeting. How do you guys feel about that? And this is something okay. I hear too, that, that um, upselling to an album is, is like slimy sales. And I, I, I'm fascinated to know what you guys think. Well, no, because they're in our packages. So if we don't talk about that and show that, that's actually sales sleazy because that's something they're going to get. So we're just actually showing what it is, what's included. Um, I think to answer your question, because the albums is the final destination in our mind, and what we believe in is that our photographs, the final destination is an album. And so that's why we go straight up to the album being um, the first point of call, as opposed to the album being an add-on and thinking, okay, here's your digitals. And the add-on is the album. So as soon as I talk about the album, I'm talking about an add-on. But because the album is not an add-on for us, that's why we can... And, and to be honest, the number one secret about getting an album into everyone's hands, like if you wanted to sell an album to everyone, the number one secret is to include it in, in at least some of your packages. So yeah, we'll talk about that. as an add-on, it will seem salesy because you're bringing that person to that add-on. Whereas because we include it, that's our first point of call because that's our final destination for the photographs. And often because we've done our job before they've even come in. So they've seen this on our website. They may have come into contact with us at a trade show. Um, and in fact, we always get follow-up emails going, oh my God, you guys stood out because we remembered your books. We loved your albums. We loved the fact that we could see something and touch something. So people come in going, oh, yeah, 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 I want to show my partner those books, you know. They might not, not have seen them at the show or seen them online. So it's really part of just the process. Um, again, it's just educating. We're not saying they have to have anything. Um, we're just showing what's available. But we're genuinely excited because we genuinely love it ourselves. You know, we couldn't sell or talk to something passionately if we didn't believe in it or if we thought it was tacky or, you know, daggy or glossy or whatever, we wouldn't sell it. So um, for us to have these albums that we love so much, it doesn't feel like we're actually doing a sale. And the other thing there is... it. Um Ellen has made a point in chat, and it's a point that uh, I remember um, James Simmons making many years ago. He just, as the couple come in, if, if it's a, an in-person sale, the couple come through the door, you get them seated, you ask them if they want a cuppa, um, before you head out to make the cuppa, just leave them with some albums. It's not even like you're, you're, you're forcing it. No, yeah, no, it's how you want to present it, hands. of course. And that's kind of the subtleties of bringing things into people's knowledge and for them to start to see and maybe plant a seed or anything like that, of course. If you just go straight to, oh, bang, here's an yeah. album, um, but it's an extra and it's going to cost you a thousand bucks, that's, that's it's not going to quite work, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's all about the subtleties. That That's kind of, and the way that you present things. You know, they've sat down with us. They're having a nice coffee. I have gone and made the coffee. We've got to know their story where they met. They're telling us about the beautiful day. We're probably 30 minutes into the conversation at this point. 
And then we say, guys, do you want to hear about our collections and what we offer? And they'll say, yeah, of course. Well, let's show you some albums we so say, you can see some of the photos that we've done yeah, in the past. Let's start this with This is our you. style. This is what we do. Yeah. Yeah. So it organically comes into the conversation. It's not like, oh, sit down, hey, here. Um, no, but I think the main thing is because it's an add-on, you're thinking, oh, okay, it's a bit salesy for me to talk about an album straight off. So maybe if um, you change that a little bit, it won't feel so safe. Sounds. Any other questions there, Libby? Uh, Simon has asked, um, are clients happy with their images being used in a display album? All I can say is that you definitely need to, to get approval well, from them. But do you guys ever have many problems? No, because mm -hmm. um, they sign that off in the contract when they first book with us. So Excuse there's me. a term and condition that says that we can use the photographs for album displays, for trade shows, for promotional, promotional purposes. purposes, for entering awards, everything like that. But, you know, that. unless they're kind of, you know, no. secret squirrel jobs or, you know, okay. police or, you know, FBI or something, whatever you call or it. Or full of themselves. You know, yeah. or, or just that not into it, that's fine. You know, we're they happy just sign to that off and go, respect okay. that. We wouldn't use their images that's cool but you know 99% of people are really stoked to even get on your insta feed you know they think oh they're trying Jesus. to woo so yeah that's that's yeah. it for the minute I think all right yeah so Thanks. the idea and I think we kind of touched on that is that don't dilute your message by not including an album in one of your packages or in most of your packages like yeah, and as we've said, you know, don't think of it as this add-on that comes at the end. It's the final destination. It's part of the, you know, packages. So let's go into, I think we should go into our packages now and what they actually look like. So we'll show you what our packages are and we'll talk to those and we'll, we'll go through it. So we offer um, three collections. We have an entry level and that's... The first one, you'll notice it's only six hours coverage. Um, it doesn't have two of us, so it's either one of us. And it only has the digital image collection and the before forever photo shoot. Now we deliberately don't put the album into that one because we don't actually want to sell that one. We always want to sell our middle package. Um, so for us, that's got eight hours coverage. It's with both of us, which is Pretty More much of the brand of the beautiful collective. our brand is both of us shooting, getting that dynamic variety. Um, it includes the 10 inch fine art album with the first 24 sides. It has the high res digital collection and the before forever photo shoot. So just to, so you know guys, a before forever photo shoot for us is an engagement shoot. Yeah. yeah. Just and so then you know. um, the journal, which is our top package, pretty much the same as the middle. We work an extra couple of hours and some extra sides in that. That's for more bigger weddings, people where budget is not a concern and things like yeah. that. So of course the postcard is entry level. Um, because a lot of photographers do only shoot digitals, we stay in the market with that coverage. Um, keeps us competitive. Keeps we don't us competitive want to in that area. Ourselves. The notebook is the go-to for us. That's the one we want to do the most of because eight hours is about as much time that we can handle on a day, on a wedding day these days with the achy body in the, in the, the old age and stuff Sweet like that. Um, and of course the journal is the top package when only the best will do and something that we don't really want to do a lot of, but it makes the, the notebook more valuable. Yeah. So the other important thing in this is the language that we use as well. Um, you know, we list it by saying the album is the first 24 sides or the first 28 sides. Um, so we're being quite clear that we're suggesting this is a starting point. Um, this is not possibly the end destination. But, you know, we say to them, guys, it's your choice. It's your option. You have the option to include as many sides as you feel comfortable with. Um, and we ensure them that we will work with them in that process yeah. to not only get the album of their dreams, but that they can afford. You know, we're not into putting people over a barrel, it, it, you know. The, the idea of saying the first 24 sides, and we really welcome the question from the couple when they ask, 
oh, what's the first 24 sides? What actually does that mean? Because it gives us an opportunity to explain that, you know, your album will come with the first 24 sides. We have absolutely no idea what photos you're going to like. We, have, 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 we don't know any absolute idea of what photos we're going to take. We don't know how the day is going to pan out. But so that there's no constraints, you can have as many photos as you feel comfortable. So the idea behind that saying is, we don't know at this stage, we're maybe nine months out before the wedding, but to constrain someone into just having 24 photos when they might have 300 other shots that they want to include doesn't quite work, it doesn't quite sit. So what we do is it's important for them to know that it's the first 24 and that more can be added as they feel comfortable. Yeah. Guys, got a question from the crowd. Yeah. Um, is there any reason why you avoid calling them pages? We sell, um, as Daz mentioned, by side. So you could, if you wanted to say the first no. 12 pages, no. you could sell by doing no. it. He's going, no, 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 no. No, no, because the idea of a page for some people means two sides. Yeah, but if you did your price. No, no, but then, then it gets confusing because someone will say, oh, that's the first page. And I think that's still part of the first page. Can, can I interject here to make a comment? People will say that's a page. So it's easier to say that's a, that's, that's a spread, that's a sign. Can I, can I interject to say I think the answer is that it, that it is subjective um, to a degree as long as you explain your definition of a side or a page. I know for Memento, um, when we introduced albums, we had not... So we had always used the term pages when yeah. we were referring to our books because people understand a page is a, a leaf in a book and a sheet is two sides. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but that's how we saw it. Anyway, when we introduced albums into our range, we did have a bit of a quandary because we had to, we knew that generally speaking, album uh, suppliers and people who produced albums used the term spreads rather than pages. So you will notice in our price list that when we talk about books, we refer to pages. When we have our albums, we refer to sides and spreads. So all in all, I think that as long as you explain clearly to your clients, whatever you choose, just make, it, make sure that it's clear. Yes. The thing is to not mince your language. So if you're going to, at your touch point on your website, talk about you know your albums including 24 sides but then in your you know printed packages you say 12, uh, 12 pages. pages you may confuse people so i think stick to the method it doesn't matter i don't agree with daz on that one <laughs> i don't think it matters whether you want to say it includes 12 pages or 24 sides as long as you keep that language consistent and you know what you're talking about so you know how to explain it um but 24 sounds better i think than sounds like more 24 12. sides as opposed to 12 12 yeah. spreads 24 sides it's just the way we've done thing. it yeah so and guys, but just while you are talking about pricing and to um, just to respond to some of the questions that have come up in the chat, um, Hales and Daz will be talking much more about specific pricing later on. Um, but one question that is relevant now is, do you have your prices on your website or is the first time you talk pricing when they meet with you or when you communicate yeah. uh, with All them? these prices are on our website. Yeah. 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 So we're like, you know, the key once again about it's, it's, it's clear communication and being transparent. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're in a point in our career where we don't want to field hundreds and hundreds of inquiries to find out that maybe we're a little bit expensive for people. Yeah. So we want to have that on our website to kind of filter out the people that we may not be able to work with and obviously filter in the, the couples that we, we can work with. So... Uh, yeah, yeah and these think, are all on the website. Go yeah, check it out. I, I think these days, you know, photographers are open to sharing with each other. We're all not in that, oh, don't tell anyone, don't lie. I mean, we are in our point of our career, we're like that. I don't know if you're starting out, you might be different. But I think that openness and transparency yeah. 
weeds out whether they can afford you because you don't want to waste, you know, a precious hour or an hour and a half of your time, you know, having them come in to meet you or meet at the coffee shop to find that they have a three grand budget, you know, when you start at forty two fifty. So that's really the reason. It's totally up front and in their yeah. face. I mean we could have started with pricing starts from forty two fifty and that sort of thing, but you know we felt that because albums was a really big part of our of, of what we offer, that we wanted to have all those pricing in there so that people could, you know, see for themselves. And if they want to get in contact with us, they can. If they don't, well, then they don't. We used to just put that, like yeah. pricing starts at that. And so we'd get a lot of inquiries coming through going, oh, awesome, yeah. you know, and yeah. we want you to shoot 12 hours. And is well, it still only like a little bit more? And yeah. we'd go, oh, uh, no, no, it's like, a lot more. It's a lot more. <laughs> You know, so. Interestingly enough, though, um, with, with the prices on the website, we actually got a booking about maybe five weeks ago from a couple who saw us at a trade show, but just very briefly. And because they knew the prices online, they actually booked the journal package from us straight off the bat without coming into, mm -hmm. because of COVID, they couldn't come in and everything like that. But they said, oh, that's what we want, and we'll, we'll book that. So. And the interesting thing with that couple is the first thing, I, I don't even know, can't even put a face to who they are. No. Obviously, we no. met them at one fine day. But um, she remembered our books. Yeah. And that was the first thing she said is, I remember your beautiful stand because I looked at all your albums. Oh, um, so, yeah. you know, anyway. So, you know, having your prices there, you know, there's, there's reasons for not and reasons for we're, we're putting them on there now so that, you know. All right, so, you know, we'll go through now sort of the um, continuing points, you know, keeping that communication clear. This is all, you know, these questions relating to that, being transparent with your couple. Um, so, you know, they've met us, they've come in, they've um, obviously booked us now at this point. So we further then send them the terms and conditions. Um, that also explains our process in this album designing that they can expect to, you know, it's only the first 24 sides and that most couples will spend extra on their final um, album product. Um, we also send them a gorgeous welcome pack um, with this beautiful glossy book, which we designed, also printed by the lovely Livy and Co. Um, but it's... It's a really... That's officially a booklet, just so you would get... Yeah, so, so this booklet sets the expectations of how we work with the client. It tells them exactly of how we want to do business. And the section on album designing is two pages. And it talks about everything to do with the fact that there's 24 sides, that they may wish to purchase more later on, you know, and everything to do with, album, with the album process is all there for them to read. Not just the album process though, what to expect from us from the beginning, mm -hmm. how we're going to interact with them, when we're going to interact with them. So we're giving, we're setting the stages for them so they know exactly what's going to come, when it's going to come and what's going to happen. Um, and then we back that up with, um, thanks Liv, we back that up <laughs> with um, automated emails that go out as well. So throughout the time, you know, because often couples will book us a year out, right? Six months minimum. Like, so we've, we've got a lot of time up our sleeve to gently filter and keep the communication going with them. Um, and also we set a date. So we set that date for the album design and we do this closer to the wedding. Again, we confirm it via um, email and we reaffirm what's going to happen in that session. Mm -hmm. So we'll send out a detailed FAQs. Um, it explains everything. We infer that there's likely to be extra sides they will want to purchase. They don't have to purchase anything. We're just giving the option, right? But we're just showing that these steps are in place. So that they can come on board with our process. Yeah. And do you guys use uh, any like Studio Ninja or any tools like that? We use 17 Hats, which is a, a American based um, client management software. And I looked in for a few years before Studio Ninja became available. 
Um, and, you know, I think with Studio Ninja being an Australian product, mm. when we're ready to, to, or when we can shift from 17 Hats, we will. 17 Hats has been a great program for us because of the workflow situations and being able to send the automated emails and the reminders and everything like that. But, um, so you're not having to recreate the wheel and, mm. and kind of think, oh, shit, did I send that email at the right time? Like, this is all laid out. This is beautifully thought through. You know, there's a lot of work that has gone into getting this housekeeping, getting our shit sorted. Like, this is not just ad hoc and done, oh, we need to send that email because their wedding's coming up. Like, this is planned properly and concisely and very d deliberately so that there's time to overcome any questions from the couple um, and go through that process in a really nice um, way and an authentic way. It, again, there's no um, sales because we feel that it's done in more of a conversation. Yeah, and part of a process. All right, so let's, so, all right. yeah, all right. So that was stage two, right? So stage one, you've um, met them. You've been able to in. put the books into someone's hand. Yep. They've booked you. And I was actually just thinking about this client who booked us basically online. When we send out the contract in 17 hats for them to read, so we've never, we haven't done an interview with them at all. They've, we've just sort of spoken to them at the trade show. They've loved what we do, what we do for albums and things like that. And then they've decided to, they want to book us online. So we've sent them the contract. And one of the first things the contract actually says, and it's highlighted, and they actually have to tick it so that they've read it, is that they understand that we're only offering the first 24 sides in an album and that extra sides are normally needed to complete the wedding day story. So if that client, even though we hadn't done an interview with them and they had a problem with the fact that, oh, you know, does that mean we're going into a sales process or something like that, they had the opportunity right then not to actually go ahead with so well, because or ask we're up the front, question. Or at least ask the question, sure. But they had the opportunity because it's there in black and white. So that's being part of the being clear and transparent. Right. So one of the next stages about being clear and transparent and being able to get uh, a product into the hand. Stage two. Sorry, guys, that should say stage two. I, I, I did a typo there. So we've done stage one, which is the interview. And this is actually stage two. So there's five stages, this being stage two. This is this, is this before forever um, shoot. So what is that? Tell so me. before forever shoot obviously is an engagement shoot, but what it is, is it's a fantastic opportunity for the couple to not only get to meet us, see how we work, everything like that, but it also means that, you know, once they've gone through the process, they actually get to see themselves for the first time in a printed product. So what, what Libby's showing you there is one of our um, signing books. So what that is that, you know, couples get to bring that to the reception and their friends will sign the blank pages and everything like that. And there, that's actually another opportunity of getting an album out to the masses by sort of supplying a product like this because all their friends and family at the wedding are going to see their photos printed. And we do this complimentary, okay? So we include this as part of what they've paid for in working with us. It doesn't matter if they just do the base package or the top package or the middle package. It is included in every single collection that we offer. And the reason we do this is obviously not only so that they can get to know us and we build that rapport with them and, you know, we break the ice well and truly before the big day. We want to expose them to the value of printing, you know, and this is the first opportunity for us to do that with them in the photos. So um, we don't include any digitals in this. We're very clear and transparent that there is no product included. It is the um, opportunity... Yes, just our time to do, to the, do shoot. the shoot. Yeah, it's the experience. So we're giving them the experience. Yeah. And so the majority, probably 95% of our couples will do an engagement shoot with us. And what that is, is that it's an extra uh, sale or an extra opportunity for us to photograph the couple and to perhaps you know, sell something to them that they might cherish. You know, so what we do is we do a 45-minute shoot. Yeah. 
Um, we often just go around the local port or up to the local park or, you know, if they've got somewhere really special to them um, that they may, you know, pop the question to each other, we may visit that, but we keep parameters. We're not going to travel, you know, two hours. This is something we're offering, remember, complimentary. So, so that means that we remain in control yeah. because it's under our under our guise of, of doing something free and giving them an opportunity to see how we work and to relate with photography and things like that. Yeah. So, but that also gives us the control so that we can just do it. Basically, they meet us at our studio and we go to different areas around Alexandria or up to Sydney Park. But it means that we're more, um, you know, time, time, not, we're not time poor going to different areas. Yeah, and but, like you that. know, we're offering that as also part of our service. So we don't know if we're going to get a sale out of them. It's not actually about that. Again, it's us giving our time. So this is giving that service. We're prepared to do the 45 minute shoot, process the files, you know, choose the favorite 60 to 40, you know, 40 to 60 images and invite them back to have a look at the feedback, like to see if they thought they were really awkward or they don't like the left side of their nose or they think their boobs are too big or they're too short or whatever, you know, all the things that we hear, you know, sometimes from couples, their little insecurities, by getting them to come back, we iron out those things, but we give them the opportunity to see them. You know, it's all good and well us having these beautiful books and we have lots of them and, you know, prints on the wall. But until they get that realisation of going, oh, oh wow. I we look great actually, in photos. Yeah, we actually look good. Like, and these how, printed ones are so much better than what you showed us on the TV the other week. Yeah, so it's the first time that they get that connection of going, oh, shit. There's we, a lot of value in the printed photo. Yeah, we actually look good and we trust what you've done. And, oh, my God, you know, we, we, you shot us down in that little dumpster alleyway. But, hey. Well, look yeah, what you made we, out of it. You know, we look cool. So um, we... we Give them the opportunity. If they love something, they can buy it. So we're, after we've done the shoot with them, we sit them down, we have a cuppa, we say to them, guys, we're going to make a time for you to come back to the studio. And if you want to purchase something, it's up to you. We'll show you the options that are available. We keep it really simple. We only give them three options. One is wall art, you know, like um, our blocks on the wall behind us. Um, again, printed on beautiful matte stock. Um, we do a box set of prints, which uh, start with 10 in, a, 10 in a box and come with this beautiful display block. That is really cool because you can swap the images out so they can, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not fussy. Um, and then the third product is a book. So a and a variation of that is a signing book that they can take to the reception. Yeah. So, again, keep it simple. We don't overload them with a million options. We then make a time and they come back in and have a look. Yeah. And, you know, 99.9% .9 of our couples want to walk away with something. They can just buy one print. They can buy a box of 10. We don't care. Like, it's up to them. We're not forcing them into no. anything. Um, but our average is 11.50. So we also give a little voucher to them as a thank you. So a coming on board present with us, we give them a couple of hundred bucks to spend on a beautiful print. So um, that's an incentive. It gets them into the idea that they can purchase something if they like. Yeah. So hey, guys, you're getting a lot of comments about this and um, you've been called geniuses. Um, what else have we got here? Um, Yes, people wanted to know if you were selling an album. I just want to clarify, when you said book is the third option, do you mean a book or a flush mount album? A we, flush mount album. Yeah, it's a yep. flushy, but we call it a book because at this point, you know... It's we want to have a variation to the wedding album. And it's a bit more relaxed, like it's not going to have 100 sides. We just keep that really simple. If... Um, they love the collection that we've shown them. If they go off the bat, oh, my God, we can't decide from these 60 images that you've shown us, we'd love them all. We just go, you know what, leave it to us. We'll put as many as we can in this, you know, leather. The album is probably journal. the best way for them to go when they love the whole collection because it's yeah. the most value because the way that we run the pricing is that basically the more you put in, the cheaper it will become for them. So they'll get better value. 
and they'll get an album because they've chosen 60 photos. Yeah. Well, and we, so we don't do that one per side. We just do it as a job lot. So we sell our albums at 2,800. Um, they got their $200 voucher off. And so if they want 45 images in it or 50, it's whatever they, whatever yeah. we show them. Um, but what we do, which I didn't mention, is for every image they purchase printed, we give the digital file complementary. So if they do a box set of 10, they will also get those 10 um, retouched, you know, if we need to retouch them, um, images complementary. So they can use them on their website, save the date, yeah. you know, things like that. But, but again, we're inferring that yeah. they're well, an archive. We're reinforcing the fact that they're not... They're the secondary format, not the primary format. Yes, exactly. the primary is the print or the beautiful book or the piece of artwork on yeah. the wall. And, and um, it has no value because you're not going to ever see it again. Yeah, and, you know, so we do little combos. If they want to do a box set of prints and throw in a piece of artwork, yeah. we give them the entire collection. So there's little things yeah. like that. But, but again, it's simple. It's not fussy. And can I just ask, guys, am I right in thinking this is where you give the gift certificate? Yeah. Yeah, so, after the shoot. Yeah. So what we've done is we've done the shoot complimentary to make sure that everyone does it and that they see that, you know, that part of the benefit of doing that is to work with us and to see how we work and, you know, often to make sure that we're the right photographers for them and things like that. The $200 voucher is to basically invite them to purchase so that they they know that they're coming back to maybe look at something that they may want to go with. And no obligation, no sales, which one do you like? I love all these 10. Well, maybe a box set's probably the way you want to go. Oh, okay, I'll go that way. And yeah, what they love is that they'll go, oh, that's really awesome because, you know, we can put this on our wishing well table. It you decorates know, the at wishing the wedding well. Or, we're going to bring that book and put it on a little stand, you know, in the And mum and dad have helped us for the wedding, so we're going to give them a couple of prints and, you know, things like that. Yeah. There's a lot of options. And often up until this point, they don't have any nice photos of themselves. Yeah. They've got selfies or they've got, you know, <laughs> the dodgy family photo where they look like, you know, meerkats. But the most important thing of it is that they get to see themselves in the printed format for the first time. So once they pick up, whether it's an album or a box set or something on the wall, it's an important step because it actually vilifies the fact that the album for their very special wedding day needs to be put into an album and needs to be printed because they've actually seen the evidence at this stage that printed photos are so much nicer than having the digitals. Thank Any you. There, Any Look, ones? there is one more, and I don't know, you might want to hold off on answering it to, at the end. Um, Colin, I'm going to read his comment. He says, loving this webinar. It's brilliant. Absolutely love your business model. But he's wondering um, if you could see that model working for photographers in a market where clients' budgets max out at three to 4K. Now, I don't know if you want to answer this now or at the end where I, the, the wonder grid comes up. Yeah, like I think the thing is, is that we don't ever assume, right? We've had clients that will turn up in, you know, a Porsche 911 Tiger yeah. convertible and, and spend two extra sides and think that they're spending a fortune. You know, and we'll have clients that still live at home. And this has happened. One of our couples still lived at home with their parents after the wedding. Yeah. And they did two volume sets and they did artwork and they did everything because photography was so important to them. This, this, you know, tangibility they had such a connection with. So we don't ever assume, we don't ever like to say, oh, because we're in Alexandria, this is the demographic. We don't ever make assumptions about that. And we're going to talk a lot about this coming up. So I think we'll leave that there, but we'll come back to Colin if he's got further. I think um, one of the important questions. aspects of how we do it is because we get to do the album design with the couple after they come back from their honeymoon and before they go to work, they've often actually have about 100 envelopes full of cash or full of checks or something like that that they haven't had an opportunity to spend yet because often when you plan a honeymoon, you've actually got to pay on your credit card the, all the flights, all the accommodation, and you probably don't really want to take cash with you if you're going overseas or something like that or even to Fiji or Vanuatu or whatever. So you pay everything on your credit card. 
but you you often have this sort of maybe a hundred different envelopes with money sitting in it that you actually haven't allocated yet. And because we're in that position where we've got this opportunity for them to purchase extra photos if they want, they're doing it at a time when they may have some cash lying around that they can put towards that if they wanted to. Yeah. That's actually quite funny because I think we have had couples turn yeah. up and, and bring out the, the envelopes, envelopes oh, from that. the wedding. Is that enough but, deposit? You know, um, so, you know, look, at this stage, you've done the, the before forever photo shoot, you've exposed them to the brand, you've said, guys, come and have a look, get the feedback, see, see the direct connection to see what we've done with you in that time. And, you know, if they've loved what we've delivered in a 45-minute shoot, then the trust is now going up and up because if they've had that beautiful experience and they've purchased something, when they pick up those prints, every single couple says, oh, my God, like... They look so much yeah, better than on the screen. These are amazing. Everyone says And they oogle over them. They touch them. We, don't, we just sit there and go, yeah. here's your baby. Like, yeah. we just hand over the beautiful box. They unwrap it and we just shut up. We just sit there. <sighs> And we wait and they go, ooh, ah, e, you know. Because that's part of the education, right? It's part of educating the client to understand the value of a printed photo. And then what we say here at this point is, guys, we shot you for 45 minutes. These were the results. Can you imagine what it's going to be like for the eight hours that are going to be with you on your wedding day? Yeah, if you've loved what we've done now, like you're going to absolutely, it's going to be awesome, right? We're going to get totally over the moon with what yeah. the wedding day is going. To be. Eight hours, we're going to shoot shit loads. Which, which helps again when you ask someone, "Hey, can you climb a tree?" Because it'll be a great photo. They trust you really now, right? So, and you can get them to be more themselves because you've validated that trust by being able to show them something physical. Right. Hey guys, sorry, one, you, we're doing well. We've got about 45 minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, but I do just want to ask, um, I'd like to, to share a comment from Leanne who says, we had a budget in mind for our photographer. This was before yeah. she started photography herself. But once she saw the photographer's work, the budget went completely out the window. That's yeah. exactly right. Um, so wedding don't normally go together, yeah. to be honest. But yeah. So if they love it, they'll pay for it. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, that's the, part of your job is to make them love it. Make it irresistible. You've got to work really, really hard. You've got to hone your craft. You've got to be enthusiastic. You've got to make things happen. You've got to, you know, put shit uphill if you have to, to get shots and to get photos and to tell the story. You've got to work really, really hard. But you should also be remunerated for working very hard too. And that's, that's part of how our process works. And I think you'll show that very clearly at the end. Um, and just one last thing before um, you move on. Um, Glenn has asked, um, so after the before forever shoot, they don't see a print of themselves yet, only if they purchase something. But I don't think that's correct. They see the images, right? Yeah, so we'll do a normal sale using ProSelect uh, up on a TV screen. You know, we do the slideshow to start with and then go through, choose your favourites, which ones you like, you know, normal sort of process. Um, We'll spend about 45, 50 minutes mm -hmm. with them in that and we mm -hmm. go through them one by one. We get rid of the ones they're not keen on, the yeah. ones they really love. It's, again, that of, if, weeding through. Of course, if, if they choose not to purchase anything, then no, they wouldn't see anything printed and, you know, we would but just... they'll see on. it on screen. They just won't yeah. see it. Yeah. And they've got that feedback. They know that they've enjoyed the shoot. And that's okay. It's like, fun. we're okay if they don't want to purchase something. We don't kind of go, uh, you know, assholes or, you know, we, we disattach ourselves emotionally to it because mm. for us, we just do our job and we know that... What it does do is we try and make sure that they really understand the process for the wedding album and that they haven't misunderstood anything because it can be a little bit of a flag that they haven't purchased anything. That, oh, you know, maybe our style's not quite what they thought or, you know, for whatever reason. So we just make sure that the other processes and the other steps are done and are more clear that 
okay, you know, you know that you'll probably want to spend more in the album. And, you know, just finding out those things. So, you know, and it's really, an important step, I think. It never happens. You know, if people just no. want to buy one 8 by 10 matted print, we offer that. Yeah. You know, it's $450. They can get their 200 bucks off. Yeah. So for 200 bucks, have they nice can have a yourself. beautiful print. Now, have we made any money on that? No, Not really. Not. When we take out of our time and... But what we've given is service again. So yes. it doesn't really matter. Um, and built up trust. Yeah. And at yeah. the end of the day, it's about the average over the year rather than the individual. And to be honest, they might be holding on to their cash for the album. Yeah, that's right. You know, so it's okay. It's okay. They'll all um, have different spends, you know. So there let's one, sorry, has there was one other non-financial benefit that you mentioned um, to me, which was you learn more about them, but you might also learn about a family member that's particularly special. So on the day when you're at the, the wedding, you get to capture moments that are particularly special yeah. to them. Oh, you've yes. listened. Exactly. You know, how many times have we had couples come in and it's often the male you know, he might start and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, we've got to do this today. Like, yeah, I'm not really into it. You know, whatever. I'm just keeping the missus happy. You know, we don't tend to get more of those guys today, but I'm sure you can all identify with that. But by the end of the shoot, we've done it. We've been ourselves. We joke and laugh. We're cheeky. We swear. We carry on. That's us, right? <laughs> yeah, we already gathered that. But, you know, we push guys like that too, right? Because we got to get them out of their shell. And often they go, oh, wow, that was a lot different than what I expected it to be. That was actually fun. Yeah. You know, because, you know, we talk about it's not about the photos, mate. It's about you being intimate with your girlfriend, with your fiancé, and sharing Partner. quality time together. Yeah. It's about quality time together, not about the photos. Yeah, and we always say, guys, this is about you guys connecting. Don't worry about the photo taking. Yeah. Like, photo, we'll, do, we'll look after the photo stuff. Yeah. You just love your girlfriend. That's what yeah. I say. Or your, your partner. partner. We love your partner. We love your girlfriend. And, you know, um, what it's done is break that ice. So come game day when we suggest, like, hey, I know there's a shitty little kind of, you know, wall over there or a dodgy you know, sewer pipe, pipe, I've actually done this. We've got shot them near a sewer that looked amazing with weeds. Yeah. They didn't look at us and go, are you are you serious? Like, it's like, oh, yeah, no, or, yeah. you know, it's at the end of towards where they need to go back to the reception and you can see the golden light is sort of just about to happen and they're torn between either the, we need to go to the reception and we say, hey, guys, that golden light is going to make an amazing photograph. Just they give go, us two minutes. We all we need two minutes. minutes. They're going to go, yes, um, we trust Darren and Haley, so we'll go get the golden yeah. light photo. As opposed to, no, my, my venue needs me there to sit down because five minutes the reception's going to start. They go our way. That could be four sides in the album for us, maybe even six sides. So there's a monetary value to that. But we're genuinely passionate. We're not thinking dollars at this point because we've got to know them they're now you know often we'll turn up to a wedding and it's not oh the photographers it's oh uh, how's and does it here so the party can start. <laughs> yeah we've had a different um exchange with them so you're quite right libby they will tell us hey you know heads up you know grandma's really ill like i don't know if she's gonna make the wedding so we're sensitive to things that um we need to know about before game day, which brings us to the next stage, should be stage three, yeah, guys. Um, <laughs> we so can't I'm a stage ahead of myself, <laughs> but it's actually stage three. So one, the we, meeting, we can't two, count. the before forever, three, finalising, right? I can count. So finalising is a meeting before the wedding day. It's when you go over the timeline, the schedule, uh, you know, finding out any important uh, aspects of the wedding that they want you to make sure you photograph, you know, and things like that. Yeah, so take the bull by the horns, right? We don't, um, we're not afraid. Again, at this point, this is our last and final touch point with them. To before. be upfront and to say, guys, you probably want to spend some more money in your album. You don't have to, of course. It's totally up to you. We have no idea what photos we're going to take. Just making sure that you understand the process. Yeah. 
So we go through the timings. Obviously, we talk about all that. I create a run sheet for them. Um, we talk about family photo combinations. And again, you know, we'll find out whether broken families don't talk to each other or whether we've got to be sensitive when we put, you know, mum's new partner next to dad's partner because they were ex-besties and they slept with each other and all that sort <laughs> of stuff. Um, you know, we'll know all this this nuances and subtleties. So we're respectful to understand all of that. Um, but it's the last point we get excited with mm. them, you know. Um, it's You're in weeks. person, you can say that stuff because the wedding's in a couple of weeks. It's just basically being up front and letting everyone know where we stand and, you know, knowing that the day of the wedding's going to be amazing and we're going to get lots of great photos. And, you know, that, come, that takes us to the day of the wedding and, and one of the things that's really important here is shooting for the album. And a lot of people say, oh, shoot for the album. But what does that actually mean, shooting for an album? And what it means is that you've got to, you know, capture the important players and the important characters. But you've also got to get images that set the scene. And, you know, what's really important is that you shoot with variety. Yeah. You've got to shoot lots of variety. You can't do the same poses just with a different background. You've really got to mix it up. Libby, you're muted again, honey. Mute to you? myself then. Here I am. I, want to yeah. I love what you're talking about now. It's the storytelling element. And exactly. Yes. So, you know, we're in the thick of it, guys. We all shoot like ninjas, right? I mean... There's two of us, so we're shooting a shitload of files on the day. We don't shoot over each other's shoulders, so because we work as a team, often, you know, I'll be doing something over here and Daz is like, I thought he's walked off and had a glass of wine, but he's In most shooting. cases, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's shooting like a long distance thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we, we capture a lot of content, so... The key to a, a great album, a beautiful album, and obviously a solid or, sale. Or, or the opportunity for a great variety. album and the opportunity for a great sale is by shooting lots of variety. So how do you do that? You know, you mix up your scenes. If you've got the opportunity to work in a couple of different areas, awesome. If you've only got 15 or 20 minutes with a couple, Use it. Don't That's be, the challenge. Yeah, don't think like, oh, God, all I've got is this one little paddock and a bit of long grass. Mix you know, it up. Get them down. Use your posing. Up. Yeah. Use your angles. Use intimacy. The veil. Yeah, get, get them, you know, quietly together and then get them loud and Bring in the bridal yeah. party. Get the bridal party all excited. Get the bridal party out. You know, mix it up. Do, do things that... Make things happen. That's what's really important. Make things Make happen. Make things happen. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, guys, you don't need epic mountains and being in the south of France. Obviously, you know, when we that get these help. beautiful destination <laughs> weddings, it's awesome. But for the majority of us, we're shooting everyday, you know, suburban scenes. Um, Libby's showing one of our well, beautiful silly. albums. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the thing is, why we say variety is that if you're always putting the couple in the same pose, like, you know, foreheads together pose or holding hands, um, you know. It just looks the stuff. same and they'll cut it out because they'll think, okay, well, there's nothing different to that. So there's no need for me to keep that. Here. Yeah. And, you know, when we know, when we're on the shoot and, you know, we know we've nailed that epic click, like we feel it. I'll often go, oh, shit, like, I've got to show them this, you know. So at the end of that little sequence, I'll run over and I'll go, guys, look at this. You look amazing. Like, friggin', that's going to look shit hot in your album as a double-page spread. And I'll genuinely mean that. Like, I genuinely probably will use that as a double spread. So and What you can see there with Libby showing the album is that every time she turns the page or the side or the spread or however you want to call it, there's something <laughs> new. There's something different. It's a different part of the story. It's a different way of presenting the photos. It might be like an eight up there, and then we're gonna to go to something like this where one photo has been sort of spun around. There's always something moving and something different. So that's the key to a beautiful album 
and for a good sale, a solid sale, is that whenever the couple turn the page, there's something new, there's something different. But as you can see, I think very quickly, you kind of get an idea of how their storyline evolved and the images that it took to get their story and, to, to You know, to this it. particular wedding was shot in um, one alleyway. Yeah. We literally walked from the venue, walked, walked around down the, the road, went around the corner, um, and you know, made it happen from there. So, so we weren't on location for yeah, hours. Yeah. So um, you can see with the variety, some of it's a bit closer in, some of that's it's a cracker. Closer, some of it's about with the bridal party. Now we've got some intimate and sort of more stylized photos. Then it's a little bit more traditional, maybe a little bit more classic. And then you know, something totally cheeky, cheeky and you know, sort of left of centre. And then something a little bit more modern, maybe romantic. You know. In the light, working with your sit surroundings. Yeah. Um, Showing off the dress, the full length of the dress, you know, stuff like that. That's what's really important. Now we're getting on to setting the scene for work for the reception. So yeah. that's, you know, that's a scene setting image and, yeah. and details all together. And then it's yeah. really just, you know, shooting the story at the reception. So, you know, when I've run up to them on game day and gone, ah, look at this, oh my God, you guys are amazing, you've nailed it. Like, do you know how much they light up? They, they like get excited. They're now, again, that trust is going up and up and up with us. So, you know, by the end of the night, they're not only hugging and kissing it, their parents are going, oh my God, you guys were amazing today. We loved your energy. Um, we love the fact that you talked to everyone, you know, so we're not... Um, People see everything yeah. about how you work. We if show it, our personality. If we, there's one tip that I can give you, you're on show the whole day and everyone, from the parents down, they watch you like a hawk. So you have to be yourself, so you, you know, so that's who you are, but you've got to be friendly to everybody because they see it. All right, so let's move on unless there's any burning questions at that point. Please. Well, we've got a couple more to go and then yeah, we've got questions at the end. We so. want to get to the crux coming up here as well. So um, back to this question, we had a question, you know, about working in an area maybe where the demographic could only afford a certain amount. So um, again, we don't assume what our couples will spend with us. So um, just because they've purchased a package up front, don't assume that they will spend you know, not spend any more with you afterwards. Okay, so that's really important. And, you know, obviously we're a little bit older and, and we've sort of seen all the different ways of working in this industry. But what we've seen a lot of is often um, photographers will limit what they think they can um, achieve because they put ceilings on themselves. They, they might have their think, own self-limiting. Yeah, they might think that they're not good enough or that their work's not there yet, wherever there is, because we're always I, learning. We haven't even got to there yet. No, we're always <laughs> developing. We're always growing as artists. We're, you know, expanding our vocabulary and our voice. So you this, never get there. You never you get can. there, you know. So I think So there should is, be now. Just do it. Yeah, don't don't limit yourself by having your own cringe factor that you wouldn't maybe spend, you know, two or three grand or um, eleven or ten or whatever. Like just because you wouldn't, don't assume and don't put that blanket um, on your couples. Because if you know you've been diligent if you worked really hard in your business, delivering those messages transparently, concisely, authentically, there's no reason why you can't, you know, double or even triple what you're going to get out of that client. But you don't actually need to sell anything. You just need to stick to this education process. Um, yeah, so, you know, at this point, it's the album planning session. We've um, shot the wedding, we've designed the album for the couple, um, we've spent probably a couple of hours on that process, we'll do a beautiful slideshow of the day to get them in the mode when they come in, um, and then we do this, the sale with them, the process. So, so the album's been pre-designed to tell the story of the day. So obviously it's this with more than 24 sides. However many sides, we have no idea because every wedding story is different. 
and we just lay it out with what we feel are the best images that tell that story and you know create a beautiful uh, platform for them to work from so that they can tinker and move things around and take things out but really it's a platform for them to take ownership with yeah so it's not uncommon that you know, I'll be designing an album and, you know, I struggle in getting it into sometimes a hundred sides. Like I'm like, shit, this could be, you know, four volumes, this wedding. If we shot a 12 hour day, like say it's a big Euro wedding and, you know, they've paid for extra hours. They have so much content. So many know. things going on, right? So many traditions. That's right. So many, you know, nuances and glances and extra things like cars and, you know, they want details of the suit and the dress and, you know, things or like that. Or say it's a tea ceremony or a beautiful ceremonial aspect that's really emotive and, you know, pertinent to their family members, then we have to include every stage of their day. So rather than to design to, oh, I want to make this album 68 sides, I'll just design I'll then go um, through the process, you know, I'll leave it for maybe a few hours, I'll come back, I might come back the next day, I'll look at it again, I'll tighten it up, I'll maybe refine it so that when we show that couple that album design, it's pretty bloody concise, it's not frivolous. It's a great reflection um, of how the day actually uh, came about. Yeah, I haven't left anything out. So I will put family photos in there. And you know what? They always stay in. Yeah. It's one thing that we go, oh, family photos. They don't mean anything to us because they're not our loved ones. But to them, they're everything. non connies and they're, you know, grandpas and grandmas that won't be around forever. They mean the world to them. So don't not put those images in because they're not aesthetically Insta-worthy. Um, I think that's a really important key message is that we're designing an album for our clients. And their this story. Is, this is not for us to enter awards. This is not for us to possibly use as a display, you know, but it's important that you design it with them in mind, what's important to them. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know, if we've done our job, if we've done all these checkpoints and touch points correctly, it's not uncommon that we will get that couple that will do a double set, like a two volume set. Um, and that's, yeah, that's because awesome. there's no ceiling to the opportunity. If you get that client who loves everything that you've done, has understood the process, has the budget, then they can do whatever they feel comfortable. But their, their idea of their budget could be $24,000. So... And we've actually, that's been our biggest sales. So we've had one client spend 24 k with us now. In, in a total album, including the extra sides into a two-volume set. Would we have known they were going to spend that? Normal Hell European no. couple. That's Hell no. Like, we would never have anticipated they would spend that amount of money with us. And, you know, they loved spending it. They wanted to have three volumes if they could, you know, but, you know, they're, they're We didn't have the point. photos enough to do three volumes. Well, we probably did, but, you know, I think I gave Libby a big enough headache in, in doing a custom set. But, um, you know, look, our average is about 3200 just so you know. So they would have spent the package with us. They'll spend roughly around that 3200 extra. So that's our, that's our average. Um, but we're going to, again do a real life design with you. So because of Corona, we actually had to do this a couple of weeks ago with one of our couples. Mm. Um, so we was, did a Zoom album design. Yeah, it which was, was um, fun. you know, new, new learning platform for us. Yeah, um, new territory for us, but, but it, it works actually. So, it worked yeah. and it proved because we've done our Process. touch point deliveries, because we've done our processes, it didn't matter that they weren't sitting next to us at our computer screen. Nothing changed. We delivered the same experience. And the even same though, service, but, you know, but via this platform. Via this platform, yeah. yeah. So, you know, All right. that's, the, that's the thing there. So let's touch on pricing quickly, guys. We want to, um, you know, talk about how you then introduce albums in your packages and how to make them obviously profitable for you. And obviously you can, you know, price, 
your work and your hours. It's of work. subjective. It's whatever you want. Whatever really. you feel comfortable with. Um, but for sure, there are costs associated with um, introducing products. You know, for for it's generally, such. yeah, it's like album software. You know, you've got Fundy or Smart Albums at about three hundred and sixty bucks a year. Um, you've got your time to pre-plan the album, which is a couple of hours. Oh, wow. You've got your time with the client doing that process. Mm -hmm. For us, the average is around three hours. Yeah, the shortest has been thirty-two minutes. Yeah. So it can happen in just a half an hour if the people love everything that you do and yeah. you know they're happy to just do minimal changes. Um, and then there's the final time of prepping the photos and uploading it to your, you know, memento, and then the physical cost of the goods. And obviously, you know, that can be anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars. Upwards, but depending on what album that you chose. Yeah, at the end of the day, only you guys can work out what you're actually um, what your time worth. is worth. Yeah. But as a general rule of thumb, you know, you want to be making at least eighty to one hundred percent on top of your cost of goods. Um, and so, I guess if you want to hit the ground running right now and you don't offer albums, you could simply take your collections, your packages, and you could. Whack a thousand dollars on top. So you might say your middle package is, is four grand. You might take that to five grand and include, you know, a 10, 10 inch album with 20 sides or 24 sides. You might want to copy exactly our model. That's fine. Knock yourselves out. Whack a thousand dollars and use that as your starting platform. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you educate in the process that there will be more. That thousand dollars is going to cover you for the cost. It's going to cover you for your time, and it's going to um, set you then into the opportunity. opportunity to to really then make some profit, some extra money. Yeah. So, and of course, guys, we haven't even talked about add-ons um, and stuff like that. You know, you've got the opportunity to add parents' albums and maybe charge more for leather or a beautiful clamshell box. Um, for us, we don't charge more for leather or um, canvas or embossing. We include that to our couples because we don't want to make it more confusing for mm. them. But, you know, I know of photographers that they are upsells and they'll give them options. We um, like to keep it a little bit more simple and say that the, the only thing that we have no idea of what you'll, where you'll end up is with the extra sides yeah. and that... You know, if you want a leather album, sure, have a leather album. We can include that for you. If you want special embossing, we can do that for you as yeah. well. So, you know, we're trying to keep it a little bit more simple. Parents' more albums, um, we do include it as set cost. So it's just an exact duplicate of the main album. So there's no changes. We don't Yeah, they're them. all the different sizes. Yeah, so the ribbon. little 6-6, <laughs> six, six, that's our parents' album. The reason we don't allow any changes in that because the work's done and the reason we can then offer a, a better price to them, we do it at a set rate, I think it's like 900 bucks um, and they'll often buy two, one for each side of the family and we don't do any changes to the design. Got to so, get to this because it's 10 Yeah, that's, that's a great extra little sale. All right, Dazza, talk to <laughs> us about some... Well, figures. you know, figures-wise... Um, if you were to... Let's bring it together. It's bringing it together, I suppose, right. So on the left, you can see it's the shoot and burn business model. It's 45 gigs a year, say an average of four and a half thousand dollars. You know, your turnover is four and a half thousand a wedding. Your total gross would be 202,500. You know, approximately $80,000 worth of expenses. So before tax, you're left with $122,500. The only way for you to scale that business is by doing more weddings. So if you wanted to add 50, 50 grand or 100 grand, you'd have to shoot 20 more weddings. So Which is doing double which, weddings. Which is doing 65 weddings a year, anything like that. Yeah. But if you add an album to your shoot and burn offerings, and so you're still doing the 45 weddings. And we like to call it shoot and earn. <laughs> you add in a two and a half thousand dollar average album. So there's that thousand uh, dollars up front that Haley mentioned before. And let's say you did so fifteen hundred dollars in extra sales. Can I explain sales. that? Sorry, Dazza. Is that what I've done there? Is I've added 
1000 extra in the package and I've only That's worked awesome. really economically that you've sold $1,500 extra inside. Can I just say, I'm not sure if they can actually see this point where we're pointing so to. We're pointing <laughs> to the so what you're looking at there is $7,000 a wedding. So your gross has gone to 315,000 and your expenses is around 103,000. So before tax, you're left with $212,000. So just by adding an album to every one of your packages and, or every one of your weddings rather, there's the opportunity for $89,000 worth of extra income. By introducing one product. One product. One album. And delivering it to all your clients, you have the opportunity to make almost $90,000 a year more, which equates to about $1,700 a week. Now, if you go into do our business model a little bit more where you add in the before forever shoot and we've done an average there of eight hundred dollars you're looking at seven thousand eight hundred per wedding which is a gross of three hundred and fifty one thousand a little bit more expenses one hundred and eleven thousand but your before tax is two hundred and forty thousand dollars so you're actually doubling what you would do as a shoot and burn photographer without shooting any more weddings but by adding in an engagement shoot or a before forever shoot and adding in a two and a half thousand dollar album, you're actually doubling your income. So with the product sales and everything like that of $117,000. But you know, Corona and the whole idea of maybe there's a downturn and you know, I started my business, uh, my dad was always very proud of me that I started my business in a recession but the one thing I understand about recessions is that you need to be able to uh, scale what you sell to each particular person that comes through your doors and works with you. You actually have to sell more to that person because it's harder to get new work to come in the door. So if you look at the shoot and burn uh, with 35 gigs now, so 10 less weddings a year, the, the gross is 157,000. And after expenses, et cetera, you're left with about 87,500. The model with just adding in the album at 2.5, your, your extra income is $35,000 more than that. And you're actually, with your gross at 245, you're actually $40,000 more than doing 45 weddings in Just Shoot and Burn. So you've worked less, but made more money. Yeah. So then you add in the engagement shoot and your turnover is 273 and, sorry, I can't read my own screen, but you're at $94,000 worth of expenses and you've got $179,000 left over, you know, before tax. That's an extra $56,000 more than just the 45 weddings at Shoot and Burn and you've shot 10 weddings less. Yeah. So that's why it's important that you start to get into offering product because it's the only way that you can scale your business. And we've done these averages, what we feel are sort of at Conservative. the conservatively, right? But this, this way of, of processing the photos and, and, and selling to the client, the opportunity is endless. There's no ceiling. A shoot and burn a 45, the ceiling is 45. That's all you can do. Whereas when you can scale your business through offering product, sky's the limit. You can do whatever people are happy to purchase from you with. And that's all about making sure that they understand what you're offering, being true and uh, transparent with how you do it and being passionate and not really assuming what they can spend and just making sure that you've got something that you can offer them that they may want to purchase. That's right. But it really, you know, I think the real key to all of this, because, you know, these figures are just figures, right? I think what you need to really ask yourself is what's your intention, you know, as photographers and as moving through your life, you know, where do you want to be and, and what do you want your life to look like? You know, if you're in your 20s and you don't have a family, and you're a young gun and you're just happy to, you know, go out there and um, you're a gun for hire, basically, you know, knock yourself out. You could be shooting 60 weddings a year and offering product as well. But, 
you know, define what success looks like for you. So for you, it might be going, oh my God, gaming an extra 10 weekends with my family, with my family yeah. or playing with my children or having just some quality time for yourself. Um, we're all so time poor these days. And I think, you know, if you can gain some further joy and enlightenment by not feeling flogged, then you get to that point in your business and your life where everything starts aligning a little um, nicer and uh, the chi is, <laughs> is a lot better for your mental health as well. You know, we've had lots of um, uh, friends in the industry that have had shoulder reconstructions more than once. They've had wrist fractures. Um, and this is real stuff, you know, this happens because we abuse our bodies and we're shooting, you know, day in, day out. So I think by offering product, it, it really opens that opportunity for you to not work and flog yourself so much, but still have a sustainable life that you want to live. You know, for others, it might be about financial gain you know, and they'd want to pay off their house or get that new car or do that European glitzy holiday. Knock yourselves out, you know. For others, it might be just getting time back. So I think it's really important that um, you take this as a platform, but you really start to ask yourself the question of what is important for you and you start doing the figures on your business, actually knowing what it costs to run your business and not just having a glimpse of what the accountant might send you each you know, year. Understand it. Start looking at the time you invest um, and put a value on that because I think a lot of people don't value the time that they spend um, enough. I, I think that's really important. So at the end of the day, what's the better experience? Something like this? Boom. Something like that. Oh, that. We think it's something like this. <laughs>